Welcome to the Liverpool Connection podcast. Julian here with Chris. And we're going to talk about everything European at the moment. Um, the Champions League, the Europa League. In fact, I'm going to rewind. We're not going to talk about the, the Conference League because... No, just not yeah, I'm not that bothered, unfortunately. Man United might be next season, but well, you know, Villa they don't going. worry about it then. Villa are there. They, they are, they, are going to have a say in the in the in the championship. So. Uh, they are. But we'll chat about, of course, Liverpool play Atalanta. Uh, we're recording this on Wednesdays. Uh, they're playing Atalanta on Thursday. Um, myself and Glenn, we did a pod the other day where. We were chatting about it, what we were thinking it's regarding our lineup. Uh, oh, you like that? I did. It was oh, good. All right, cheers, man. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> so, we'll briefly touch upon that. Yeah. Any any feelings regarding us going into that game? We had. I will add, we had the clock press conference today. It looks like there's no fresh injuries, which is really good. It also looks like uh, Jota, Trent, and Allison are back in training. Yeah. Maybe this game comes too soon. But any thoughts on the Atalanta game? Nah, probably. Uh, probably too soon for the three lads good though that they're back training with the team and hopefully hopefully they'll be back in contention at least for the bench uh, on Sunday at, at Palace but now nah, tomorrow I think um, I think Atl- Atl- Atlanta are probably a good side but I just think we'll, we'll, be, too, we'll be too good for them um, I think especially at home uh, European night I think uh, we'll, we'll have too much for them and I, I feel it should be a pretty comfortable night for us tomorrow night I hope so obviously I mean Atlanta Atalanta I should say you know decent side their league yeah. position doesn't really suggest that but if you look at their results they've got good results away from home against some of the best teams in Italy not to mention they knocked out everyone's favourite second side at the moment Sporting in the Europa League so they're a decent outfit it seems yeah I think they are and I think they caused us problems the last time we met them in the Champions League right we had a couple of games with them yeah. that was pretty wild um, they kind of play a very open style football for an Italian team um, so you can kind of see you know a lot of their a lot of their if you look at a lot of their results you know their 2-2s 4-0s 3-0s 3-0 wins um, you know they're pretty high scoring games uh, and I just think that again plays into our hands uh, they'll be a little bit too open for us I think and I think we'll take care of them uh, I think we'll put the tie to bed tomorrow night to be honest I hope so we want to yeah you want to make sure that you set yourself up for the second leg in the best position you possibly can especially with the important games every game is important from now to the end of the season Yeah. but if you can if you can not guarantee, but as close to guaranteeing as possible, getting a really good result yeah. tomorrow night. That the second leg you can maybe rotate a little bit more than you normally would, and I mean, that is hugely, hugely important for us. Yeah, I think so. I think that the, 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 there'll be a real onus on that. I think. I think they will go out with that sort of mentality uh, to try put this bed as far out of Atalanta's reach as possible uh, tomorrow night that way yeah as you say we can go to the second leg hopefully and rotate a little bit for, keep things fresh for you know the last seven seven league games it's the all important vital <laughs> games now <laughs> part of the season and we really so. are into the yeah, yeah the exciting yeah. stretch of the season uh, thank goodness players are coming back from injury because we can we need them we, need them. we really do need them at the moment because while we know the Man United game wasn't great and we've been we've been iffy over the past couple of weeks so I think freshening up the team maybe Trent coming back in soon is going to be vital I think Jota and his natural ability to score goals when it matters is going to be key but um, the Champions League so Barring a miracle, I'm not sure we've qualified yet for the Champions League, but it would be highly unlikely if we didn't. It's yeah. going to be close within the next couple of games, but it is a big uh, deal. I think we have. I don't think it's like quite there yet. I think, you need no. to, uh, I think with the way it's looking with the points, I think we need like another win or two. But it's, it's nailed on. We're oh, going we no, yeah, to yeah, qualify, yeah, yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. And after watching the games today and last night, you fans, missed it, don't you? 
I mean, like, it's, it's just different gravy. <laughs> it's just so good. It's so much better. It it's, really is yeah. such a fantastic tournament. Yeah. And it, it does. It produces year after year. Um, and obviously, yesterday there was the the Man City game at Real Madrid, which was magnificent. Yeah, like, what a game. Did you watch that one? Yeah, I, I watched most, but I was flipping back and forth between the two games. It seemed like in the first half, every time I switched to bloody station, the other team, the other, the other <laughs> game would score or whatever. So, uh, oh, yeah. But no, yeah, brilliant game. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the two games. And yeah, I, I, I closed out today. I, I said it to my wife even. I said, geez, you know, you'd miss being in the Champions League. And I can't wait to be can't wait to be back in the competition next next season. Uh, it's just different. It's just different craving. Best teams, best teams in Europe. Yeah. Probably the best teams in the world, really, competing for that trophy. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to, to, to seeing Liverpool again. I, I want to say that. Now nah, I wasn't. You know that I, I was going into the games last night being a neutral, right? But I wanted Real Madrid to win against Man City. It didn't happen. Um, the, the quality of the goals is magnificent. Yeah. Uh, every single goal was like yeah, high class. It really was. It was like, yeah, and, it's, and it is. You miss it. We are in the Europa League. And it's it, there's, there's a fantastic element to that is that Klopp hasn't won it. And if we win the Europa League, then he's won the complete set, so, which is yeah. brilliant. But you want to be in the best... Yeah. tournament in the world and um, I'm looking forward to it next season I am looking forward yeah. to the Champions League even with the new setup because of course it is changing it's becoming yeah a league what's your thoughts on that I don't know um, I don't think I, I I'm I don't think if it was left to me I'd go that route I don't think uh, diluting it anymore with with kind of lesser teams helps anything I don't think it helps the Champions League itself I don't think it's going to help the Europa League and, which then doesn't help, help the Conference League um, I, I would have left it the way it is but at the same time when you get to this time of the season no matter how many teams you have in it you're still going to be left with the cream of the crop and you're still going to be left with the best games of football in Europe so I mean it's, a, it's, it's another money grab I yeah. mean we know what we know what football has become and we're seeing it. We're seeing it with the Euros. We're seeing it with the World Cup. We're seeing it with the the new club World Cup that's going to happen as well. Where we're just running these players into the ground. But at the end of the day, you're right. In these major tournaments, the top teams will get out of it. Yeah. They're probably going to be in the quarterfinals, semifinals, and of course the final. Uh, but thank goodness that, barring a complete miracle, yeah. we're going to be back in the next season. We'll but, be in the hat. Yeah. Yeah, and then as far as like, yeah, as far as Arsenal and, and, and City go, you you touched on it there a little bit earlier. Yeah, you kind of find yourself. You try to be neutral, but you're not. You're like, yeah, fuck, I want I want Real to win and I want Bayern to win, and then all of a sudden you're kind of think, you know, you, you sit there and think, well, what what would be the best thing for Liverpool at this point in time? And uh, I even have to text you lads to say, here, what are we doing here? Who are we shouting for in these games? And I re- I just I I'm hoping that they'll both win. And we'll get a City Arsenal semi final, and they can knock the shit out of each other for two games. I'm glad both both ties go into the second leg, yeah. where it's still really tight. Yeah. That the teams have to be up for it because it can only help us, right? We want the pressure for Man City, we want the pressure for Arsenal, we want the tough games because yeah. we, you know, there's a league title to be won. Yeah. So the more difficult games that those teams get. I don't want to wish injury on anyone as well, but the more potential for you know injuries and just tiredness, just tiredness mentally well, and physically, it's going to help because every every little detail this yeah. stage of the season is massive, and we know that Arsenal look really good, but it's it, you know all it takes is you know an injury to Rice or Saliba or Gabriel or Odegaard, and they're in big big trouble. Yeah. So. I'm glad that both games are set up for the second leg, where they're going to need massive who, who, games. Who, who do you think teams. will go through in those two? They're, they're finally poised, aren't they? But what two all and three all? Yeah. Arsenal have yeah. to go away, and then City are at home. City. I'll, who do you think will go through? I didn't think Real Madrid were great the other night. I expected better from Real Madrid. They had a, um, 
I don't think they had, they hadn't played for a while as well. They had a bit of a break, and that that told in their performance. But if, if I look at that tie, then I think Man City have enough. I, they look a lot better than Real Madrid all over the pitch. So I would I would be surprised if Man City didn't win that game. Um, the Arsenal Bayern. I mean, they're both so hard to call, but this is Bayern's season, right? Bayern, there is a really good side in there. There is. They obviously haven't shown it in the league due to, you know, the manager situation has been a mess. Um, and they've almost given up on the league at this stage. Yeah. But, I mean, the Champions League is here for yeah. them. So yeah. that one is really difficult to call. I would lean towards Bayern beating Arsenal. You think? Going through. I think I'd agree. I think I agree. I think City will probably do the business at home. And I think it's going to be difficult for Arsenal um, to go to Bayern and probably need to win. Right, one all would. No, wait, no, they've changed all yeah, that. They've cha- changed the away so, goals. So, I don't know, maybe yeah. that, that, you know, that, 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 that could be Tarsal's favour there as well. And wouldn't, would an extra time and penalties be lovely in both games? That's what I want. <laughs> 2 0 all. 2 0 all. I would and love that. Do 180 there's, a, there's, minutes. A, there's a lot of nasty, evil things I yeah. want to happen yeah, as well, yeah. which I might have hinted at. But yeah, yeah extra time. Penalties, yeah, yeah. and, and not, just, not just penalties. I want like the go, all. I want them to go through yeah, the goalkeeper and yeah, then go yeah. back again. Yeah. Right. So they're flying yeah, yeah. out of freaking Munich at like four a.m. Yeah. Again. Yeah. I want. I mean, I want Liverpool to win the league. So any yeah. little thing that makes a difference, I want. So yeah, I ideally, the longer yeah. the game, the better. So the. Remind me again now, so that away goals now don't count at all, or do they count at some it's point? After extra time, extra time. Isn't it? so they could come down to a yeah after extra time. Uh, but it changes. We could be wrong. Let us know if we're wrong in the comments. Yeah. Completely cool. Doesn't matter. But we could be wrong. But I think it's after extra time is when the away goals yeah. count. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's uh, let's hope then for uh, two nil alls. Get them to play the extra time, and then whoever goes through goes through. But I, for me, I'd love, I'd love to see, I'd like to see Arsenal and City go through just for the fact that they would have a big. I mean, it's going to be high pressured, yeah. no matter who they play. It's a European Cup semi final, but I think an all English European Cup semi final, Sky will build it up to to ninety. The English media will build it up to ninety. I think it just add extra pressure, adds that extra. A extra bit of spice to it and um, you know with both teams knowing that they probably need to win their seven remaining league games yeah. it just adds more pressure it just makes it more difficult bring, and bring um, the pressure yeah I mean and that, I'm, I'm with you and that more helps the Liverpool um, I'm all for it so to, to close out on that in the Champions League um, I just want to end it with Phil Foden who uh-huh has been magnificent for Man City this season and he's even stepped up the past couple of weeks. He scored um, a brilliant goal against Madrid. And Phil Foden is is becoming, I mean, no one's surprised and Guardiola took his time with Foden as well when a lot of people were saying, oh, we need Foden should be in the side, we need Foden this, we need Foden that. He took his time with Foden. Now he's like a vital player not just for Man City but for England as well and I want to use the comparison of Harvey Elliott here now Harvey Elliott mm. uh, I was wondering where you were going with that <laughs> that's where I was going that was a good leading right yeah I was, like, see? I was like where's yeah, he going, going with this, with this? <laughs> so I want to use Harvey Elliott that, right? <laughs> because Harvey Elliott's got better hair right yeah, yeah, you yeah. know it's a bowl of pasta on his head but yeah. it's beautiful pasta yeah. that's good the Fazuli pasta Foden has the little freaking dodgy and, zigzag. yeah we'll get rid of that but Harvey Elliott did the did the press com- conference with Klopp today spoke no, brilliantly um, he's played a lot of games for Liverpool um, he's still really young and he is he is this season especially he's really come on I think in a long way and I think Foden is a good baron to, to, to look at for him because they kind of play similar roles. Mm. I think Elliot's biggest issue 
and he's like 20, you know, 21. It's, you know, when you're talking about a big issue, it's crazy. But has always been scoring goals and the, this final ball as well, like making that killer pass. And I think him, he's come on such a long way this season. We saw him in the side, especially when we had a lot of injuries a couple of months ago, and he was magnificent. And I feel like Elliot could be that and make that step up to be that Foden player for us. He's he's really developing in a fantastic way. I hope he starts against Atalanta and gets another run again. But um, Harvey Elliott, what's your thoughts on him? Oh, he's a great kid. Uh, he's excellent footballer. Uh, he looks like he has a really good attitude towards everything. Uh, listening to him talk very mature for a 20 year old yeah. uh, he says the right things he, he does the right things too I feel like every time he every time he comes on or he he gets a chance he, he, he tries to do his best like he really you know gives everything he has talent there's no question he's a oh, talented, he's natural, talented kid his ability um, is through the roof and then, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's actually, I, I was joking with you there, I wasn't sure where you were going with the whole thing, but yeah, I think it is a good, it is a good kind of comparison. And they're two lads that, you know, could, could have got a little bit big for their boots and say, yeah. you know, kind of kicked up a little bit, said, well, I want to play a little bit more, or do this or do that. And they ha- neither of them have, whereas, and, you know, Foden's obviously established now in, at City. I think Elliot, yeah, I think Elliot can definitely kind of look at that and go yeah that's what I want to do and it seems that that's what he's doing you know he, as I say he doesn't kick he doesn't give out he doesn't kick up um, every time he gets a chance he, he, he puts in a shift he tries his best he's a talented kid he's you know still probably can be thrown at him you know end product needs to probably needs to improve in, in order for him to, to kick on but he's still a child and uh, I, I think he's a really big, big future with us. I think he, he's somebody that, that that can definitely kick on. I think hopefully, you know, the new coach, whoever it is, comes in and uh, you know he gels with him, and he's able to you know get another little bit out of him. And I think I think he'll be a real big player for us in, in the next in the next few years. Ruben Amarim. So let's have a little chat about him. So more and more of every passing day, it seems to be that he is going to be the next Liverpool yeah. manager. Um, apparently talks have already begun, which wouldn't surprise me, considering yeah. that this time next month, we're going to be getting towards the end of the Klopp era, which yeah. is completely I'm devastating. Not I'm not ready for that. Well, Even just hearing that now, yeah. give, me, give me a chill. <laughs> but we've been through... We've been through great managers again uh, before. We'll get one again. It's, it's going to happen. Uh, this guy, looking at his record for sporting, has done extremely well for someone who's like 39 years old. Seems extremely intelligent, uh, ridiculously capable tactically. Some brilliant results in the league. Looks like it's going to obviously win the title again. Um, any thoughts on Amory? Yeah, no, I think. Um I think anything that you read, I mean, I'll be straight up honest with you, I'd never heard of him up until about six months ago, until, you know, Klopp said, oh, well, I'm leaving, and the next thing, you know, yeah. all the talk was Xavi Alonso, but there was always it's this murmur of 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 the of Amarin in the, in the background, and obviously Alonso decided he's staying put, and now Amarin is the, you know, heavy, heavy favourite to be, to be the next manager, so then you start looking into it and listening, and yeah, you look into it, you know he's won he's won quite a bit as a player i think he's won a couple of leagues with benfica as a player i think he's won the european championships with with, with portugal, portugal yeah. as a player um he's won the double in portugal in 20 2021 season you know he won the league and the cup double in portugal so you know he, he's obviously a winner yeah he knows uh, how to win which is a good which, thing which is always <laughs> a good thing yeah but it's so hard it's i mean it's great for discussions right when you're talking about this because you never know right you can I mean it's always when you're replacing a manager that has done so well for Liverpool and it's not just trophies it's the person as well right he's a larger than life figure he's done fantastically well with 
mean, you just have to look at where we were before and where we are now. But I think that's the big difference, isn't it? Though that's it's, that's really in a weird way. That's the unknown, right? It's the unknown is that his hand, Klopp is handing whoever it is, whether it's Amarin or whoever it's going to be. He's literally handing him, you know, the keys yep. to a fucking Bentley. You know, usually when you're coming in as a manager, you're picking up fucking scraps. Well, that's the, the door thing, is hanging right? off because you know the windshield is broken. It's a piece of crap. And a lot of people Everything. make the the, the yeah. Wenger and the yeah. Ferguson comparison, where well, a manager has been in a club for a long time, down. but both of them were yeah. piece of fucking shit at yeah. the time. They left a squad that yeah. was really on its last legs. Yeah. If it's Amarin, then he's going to come in and he is going to have. Like fantastic potential with this squad, yeah. right? Even if the likes of you know, even if Salah leaves, yeah. right? Which you know, we'll see. But the talent that he has yeah. at his disposal, and the kids coming through, is there. yeah. Some of those, kids, and uh, and if he's given, if he's given yeah. like a decent amount of money, which I yeah. would be shocked if he wasn't. But it's I, only going to add to that. From what I read, he likes to develop lads as well, and he's got. An, an abundance of talent yep. to be able to develop like Kwanzaa Bradley Elliot Jones still is you know is, is young and still has an improvement in there like Sabaslai isn't fuck, you know the, all yeah. these lads are Nunes even you know these, these guys still have potential for growth and improvement so he, he's supposed to be a player that likes to come in and work with young players and develop players how long do you give it before he hits the dentist? Oh, yeah. How, how long did, how long <laughs> it's did a, it's Brendan It's a requirement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Klopp, it was like two yeah. years. Yeah. I bring this up because Sobersly. Oh, did he? Did he's he in training he today. He's, he's got new teeth oh. and he looks bloody <laughs> odd. I know what it is, but it's part of a requirement. Oh, you join oh, Liverpool. That's, oh, that's funny. Your dentist appointment. Yeah, off suppose. you go. Get them veneers. Get me in. Get me in. He get a season under his belt <laughs> and off, off for the new teeth then. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm look at, look at, I'm not looking forward to it. In one way, I'm not looking forward to it. In another way, I am kind of looking forward to seeing who comes in and what they it's can always, do. It's always, it's a weird sort of excitement, isn't it? Because you're getting someone new in, you've been successful, and it's it's all. I mean, it's a it's a journey. I mean, it's a journey literally into the unknown. Yeah. You haven't got a clue what is going to happen. I mean, everyone, every podcast, every every journalist under the sun could do their analysis, look up his stats, look how well he's done with his previous teams, look how he's done with youth players. But the fact of the matter is, it's never a guaranteed success. We no, could get we could get Ancelotti in, and, you know. I mean, Everton did that, but that's Everton. And we'll yeah. See how, how shitty that went, but. I just, yeah, I just think there's a lot. As I say, I don't think managers come into jobs that often where things are going to be this good. But at the same, it's, it's, it's very true. But at the same point, it, it's still going to take patience. It's still going to take yeah, maybe sure. a new. I mean, it's not because it's not just Klopp going. It's the entire backroom yeah, staff. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. what I can see, that's and, fair. And so it is that. And luckily for us, as Liverpool fans, unlike fans of other teams, we have a lot of patience. We will, yeah. we, well, will we, we, we will, we will. But, we'll uh, but he's going to have a Champions League yeah. to deal with as well. So yeah. we'll, but we'll, see we'll, 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 we'll have patience. We will. I mean, it's going to be that period where um, it just went really quiet. The pub just, yeah. just I heard you say. You they, they just I heard you say. We have patience. We have patience. <laughs> Everybody that stopped was and looked. Weird. I mean, it's not even anything major American sporting wise. Oh, there is, like, yeah, oh, there is. is There's the Astros versus. Uh, oh, it's Rounders. Yeah, Rounders. Rounders yeah. is on TV. My little fellow is playing Rounders tonight. Yeah. But yeah, so, no, yeah. I, yeah I, look, in, in theory, he should come in and do all right pretty quick. Are we going to win the league? Yeah. I like it. All right. We will end it there. Uh, like, subscribe, do all of those things. Um, Instagram, make sure you get on the Instagram. Um, Tell us if we're talking nonsense. Yeah, I mean, we do. We talk yeah. a lot of nonsense, which is good, so call us out for it. Um, Glenn isn't here today, so maybe we'll have limited nonsense <laughs> comments. Sorry, Glenn, we don't mean it. 
Um, but it's not as angry, is it? No. No, no, you'd miss you'd miss the you you miss the passion and the the, the <laughs> Yeah. But that's alright. Like, subscribe. Good stuff. Cheers. See you later. Take care.